Hi, my name is Ethan, and today I'm going to be speaking about TreeEdit, which is a package which aims to bring structural editing to everyday languages. So what is structural editing? The way that we typically write code today is working with characters, words, lines, paragraphs, and so on, and these objects have no real relation to the structure of program languages. In contrast, TreeEdit's editing operations map exactly to the structure of the program language, which is typically in a tree form with different types of nodes, such as identifiers, expressions, and statements. And using this structure, it can enable much more powerful editing operations, and crucially, editing operations that map much more closely to the way that we think about code. TreeEdit was inspired by Parrot and Lispy, which are two great Lisp structural editors. However, what makes TreeEdit unique is that it can work with many languages, such as some of the more mainstream languages like C, Java, Python, and so on. So now I'm going to show off TreeEdit in action working with a Java program. So we can see on the left we have a syntax tree, and the node in bold is what I call the current node. So instead of the concept of a cursor where we have a point in 2D space, we instead work with a current node which all our editing operations take place upon. So we can move up and down, or rather side to side, move inwards, down to the children of the tree, back up to the parents. We can also jump to a node by its type, so we're going to jump to a variable declaration. We can jump to an if statement, and as you might have noticed, TreeEdit by default uses a Vim style mode of editing, so it's a verb which would be um, jump and then a type, which would be if statement. Um, so now I'll show off the um, syntax tree modification in action. So if I delete this delete me node, we can see the node is deleted and also the comma is removed since it's no longer needed. Um, we can add some nodes back in. Here we just have a placeholder node called tree, which we can solve out with whatever we like. Um, so if we want to put in, for example, a plus um, or minus operator. It'll put these two tree things here since there needs to be something there, but we can go fill them out as we like. Um, so that's what that is. And then I'll delete these again. Next we can see raising. So if I raise reader, then it'll replace the outer function call with the node itself. I could raise it again and the opposite operation to that is wrapping, so I can wrap um, reader back into function call, and I could wrap this again if I wanted to. So that is wrapping, and we can also do it on a statement level. So if I want to wrap this in an if statement, I can wrap a statement, and there we go. And let's just raise it back up. Raise it again. There we go. Finally, I'll show off um, slurping and barfing, which a um, little bit gross words, but I think it accurately describes the action. So let me just add a couple um, breaks here. So let's say we want this um, this if statement and a couple of breaks to be inside of the while. So we can just slurp this up. And if we don't actually want them, we can barf them back out. So that's where those words that are come from. Um, and we can just delete as we please. So yeah, that's a quick overview of the tree editing plugin in action. So now I want to talk a little bit about the implementation of tree edit. So tree edit uses the tree sitter parser to convert text into a syntax tree. And TreeSitter is used by GitHub for its syntax highlighting, and it's available in a bunch of editors, including Emacs. So it's a fairly standard tool. However, the unique part about TreeEdit is how it performs correct editing operations on the syntax tree, and then converts that back into text. So to do that, we use Minikanren. And Minikanren is an embedded domain-specific language for logic programming. So what exactly does that mean? In our case, it's just an Emacs Lisp library called the Reason, which exposes a set of macros, which enables us to program in this 
logic programming style. So I'm not going to get into the details of how logic programming works. However, one of the most unique aspects about it is that we can define a predicate and then figure out all the inputs to the predicate that would hold to be true. So in this case, we have our query variable Q, which will be what the output is. And we are asking for all the values of Q that pass this predicate of being set equal to one, two, three, four. So if we execute this, it will take a little time. It shouldn't be taking this long. Oh, there it goes. Um, we can see that it's generated a bunch of different answers that are all set equal to one, two, three, four. So it's just a bunch of different permutations of that. So we can extend this notion to a parser. So in TreeEdit, we've defined a parser in Reason, and we can use that parser to figure out um, um, any tokens that match um, the type of node that we're trying to generate. So if I execute this, we can see that Reason has generated these five answers that match what a try statement is in Java. So here we can see um, we can have an infinite amount of catches, optionally ending with a finally, and we always have to start with a try and a block. Um, we can see this again with an argument list. We have the opening and closing parentheses and expressions which are comma delimited. Now for a more complex example and something that is along the lines of what's in tree edit is if we have this x here and we want to insert another um, expression, so x comma y. Um, so we can assert that there's some new tokens and we want an expression to be in those new tokens. And we can essentially state where we want these new tokens to go within the old um, uh, list of tokens. So we're placing it after the previous expression before the close parentheses and then we can state that the whole thing parses. So if we run that, we can see that as we, as we wanted earlier, which was a, oops, comma and then expression, we have that here as well. Um, we can see this again. Here, the only change is that we've moved the tokens to be before the expression. So we wanna put an expression before this x, so we want something like y comma x. And if we execute that, we can see that it is correctly um, asserted that it would be an expression and then a comma afterwards. One last example is if we have an if statement and we want to add an, add an extra block, we can see that it correctly figures out that we need an else in order to have another statement in an if statement. So next steps for tree edits. The core of tree edit is in place, but there's a lot of usability features to add and a lot of testing that needs to be done in order to iron out any bugs that exist. I'd like to add support for as many languages as is possible. Um, I think my next step will probably be Python. Um, there's some performance improvements that need to be made since um, using this logic programming language is fairly intensive. There's some optimizations both on the library side and on tree edit side that can be made. Um, contributors are, of course, welcome, as Triada is an open source project. For future work, I think the prospect of voice control development with Triada is actually something that's really exciting, since syntax can be very cumbersome when you're working with voice controlled software. So I can envision something like saying, jump to identifier, add, um, plus operator, jump to if statement, wrap if statement in while. Um, so that's something I'd like to investigate. I also would just like to provide the core functionality of TreeSitter as something that can be used as a library for other projects such as refactoring packages or other non-Vim style approaches and just making the syntax generation available for reuse. Finally, I'd like to thank the authors of Reason and ELISP TreeSitter, 
which in turn packages TreeSitter itself, since TreeEdit um, relies very heavily on these two packages. And I'd also like to thank the author of Lispy, since a lot of the design decisions when it comes to the editing operations are based very heavily on Lispy. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you for watching.